there have been 851 episodes of Doctor Who broadcast to date. Our mission? For every single one, say something nice. Hello everyone and welcome back finally to another week of Say Something Nice. Today we are heading back to the 60s for The Smugglers Episode 1. The Smugglers was the first episode of Season 4 of Doctor Who and Season 3 had ended on something of a cliffhanger. Dodo, of course, had been unceremoniously dumped in modern day London and Ben and Polly had gone inside the TARDIS, but we only see them go inside from the outside. We don't see their reactions once they get in there and that's what The Smugglers opens with. And Ben and Polly's whole first 10 minutes with the Doctor is what I find so nice about this episode. We get the usual reaction in amazement to the TARDIS, and of course the Doctor is so irritated, he actually says, I thought I'd have some time to myself for once. Something I just love about these series of scenes is it's less about Ben and Polly talking to the Doctor and more about them talking to one another about what they're experiencing. And it establishes their characters with her being the character who accepts things at face value and rationalises them, and Ben being the sceptic who's constantly questioning things. Even when they arrive in the past in Cornwall, Polly accepts what the Doctor says, that they're in the past and wants to go off and explore, but Ben thinks he can just step back aboard his ship and resume his life as a sailor. The Smugglers gives them a lot of time together and tells us what their relationship is going to be like. And that's something really nice about The Smugglers Episode 1. It's The Smugglers Episode 2. Now for this episode, I've chosen a sequence which shows the smarts of Ben and Polly. I think part of the reason that Ben and Polly are so underrated is that a lot of their material is missing. But thankfully, many of their stories have now been completed with animation. The Tenth Planet, Power of the Daleks, the Moon Base, the Macro Terra, and the Faceless Ones has just come out as well. Although they get... <laughs> they don't get too much to do with the Faceless Ones, despite it being their finale story. But this is only their second story. They were introduced in the War Games. This is their first trip in time and space. What I'm choosing is how Ben and Polly escape from their locked cell. Now, there's this poor lad called Tom, who is a bit superstitious and is kind of guarding Ben and Polly. Polly realises that in this day and age that they're in, people believed in the power of witchcraft and dark magic, and she decides to use that against Tom. They make a straw doll, which they say that the Doctor has created in Tom's image. And if Tom doesn't let them go, then they are going to do things to the doll which will hurt Tom. What I like so much about this is they don't use physical force against Tom. It's all psychological, and in the end, Tom comes to no real harm, but Ben and Polly are free anyway. It's not so much that they're pointing and laughing at history, they're just using their knowledge of history to their own advantage. It also brings to mind the very first Doctor Who story where Ian, Susan, Barbara and the Doctor manage to fool the cave people with a similarly superstitious image of the burning skulls. Now, I think it's actually more effective here. It's played a bit more for comedy here because of the situation. It's less of a life-threatening situation. It's interesting to note that these two new companions prove their worth in a similar way to the first set of companions. I don't think it was a deliberate conscious decision. Really no one who had worked on the show in the Hartnell era was still around, maybe some directors, but certainly no producers, no script editors, they'd all moved on. But certainly Ben and Polly's calm heads and ingenuity are something really nice about The Smugglers Episode 2. The Smugglers Episode 3. Now, The Smugglers Episode 3 got 4.2 million viewers. It is the lowest rated William Hartnell episode. The Smugglers is not one that has a lot of stuff existing. There's some sensor clips, there's the audio, of course, and telly snaps. So not a lot of people know a lot about it. It was the second last historical story of the 60s, and it involves Captain Pike, who served under Captain Avery, trying to find Avery's legendary treasure and the Doctor Ben and Polly get caught up in this and there's a corrupt squire and a government agent also looking for the treasure. So it's appropriate that the moment I've chosen from this episode is to do with the treasure. At the beginning of this episode, the local squire convinces the government agent Blake to lock up the Doctor Ben and Polly. However, the Doctor convinces Blake to release them and to go get enforcements because he and his friends aren't to blame. However, when Blake leaves, the Doctor decides that if he, Ben and Polly can find the treasure, and give it to Pike, 
then Pike might leave without killing anyone. It's a clever solution from the Doctor, and it's kind of his attitude of harm minimization, essentially. He just wants to get himself, Ben and Polly, out of this situation, and to prevent further bloodshed, and the easiest way to do that is just to give Pike what he wants. Pike doesn't want to conquer the universe, he doesn't want to conquer the world, he doesn't want to assassinate the monarch of England, he just wants the treasure. And, you know, it's a bit morally grey, but the Doctor looks at the situation and says, well, this may be the best solution. And that's something really nice about The Smugglers Episode 3. It's The Smugglers Episode 4. So I've talked about The Smugglers before and pretty much the Doctor's plan to give the villain what he wants so that he doesn't kill anyone. However, here, the Doctor does just that. He helps Pike find the treasure, but in doing so, delays him just long enough for Blake's men to arrive and arrest the pirates. However, the moment I'm going to pick from this is the character of the Squire, specifically his realisation that while he may be a smuggler himself, he's no killer, and so he turns on Pike, and the Doctor saves his life. So in the middle of a pitch battle, the Doctor runs in to check that the Squire, who's been shot, is going to survive. And when he realises that's the case, he does what he said he was going to do. He and Ben escape back to the TARDIS, where Polly is waiting for them, but only after making sure that the Squire is going to get the medical attention that he needs. It shows the evolution of the First Doctor's character. Very early on, all he ever wants to do is get back to the TARDIS and get out of the situations he finds himself in. But over the course of the first year of Doctor Who, he became a more heroic figure who would stand up against injustice. And here, right at the end of his tenure, we have an example of even though he wants justice and he wants as many people to survive as possible and he will take action to ensure that happens, he also <laughs> wants to slip away quietly and unnoticed and not have to answer any awkward questions. And just that tension of the character exemplified in him checking on the Squire is something really nice about The Smugglers Episode 4. And thank you very much for watching.